16 of Old School RuneScape's biggest and best content creators all fight it out tonight for a shot at $30,000. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the All-Stars PvP Championship! On the 24th of November, myself and 15 other content creators battled it out in a $30,000 PvP tournament. Each group had four people in it, and the top two people from each group would progress onto the quarterfinals. For me to progress in the tournament, I had to come first or second place in a group of myself, Torvesta, Foe, and Rick C. Owns. The top two people would then proceed to the quarterfinals. Here's how I did in the All-Star. The first fight I had in my group was against Foe, and obviously it was a 70 defense fight. Let's see how we did. I won the first main round with a pretty convincing lead of around 7 anglerfish and 3 brewdoses left with 80 HP while he was out of food, taking the first 1-0 lead, and now we have to go do the pure fight, and if I won this, I had won the whole matchup. So the second round of my fight versus foe was a pure fight. I opted for the code I won plus 1, and he opted for the Arnold crossbow, so there was a little bit of a difference there, and this is how our pure fight went. I managed to hold a pretty substantial lead over for the whole fight and managed to win my first match in my group stages, meaning I was in a good position to progress onwards. My next match in my group stages was against Rake so obviously I pulled out the setup I actually wanted to use, which was the Malediction Ward to Crystal Shield Switch. I was pretty different in my setups compared to everyone else, and I think that's what gave me quite a bit of an edge. So obviously the 70 death fight versus Rake let's see how we did. So managing to hold quite a substantial lead right from the beginning and ending him off with a bulk KO because he couldn't keep his HP up, I managed to win my round one, and if I won the second fight in the pure, I would have won the fight versus Rexy as well, so we geared up for the pure fight. Unfortunately, in the pure fight, I was at quite a big loss right from the beginning. Rexy was all over me, he was doing a really good job at keeping me up in, at bay and controlling the pace of the fight, and I was down quite a bit of food at the end of the fight, meaning I was down, I was, uh, it was even, it was 1-1 to Rexy. And uh, the next fight would be a Zerker fight, a 45 defense fight. And the winner of that would win the whole matchup. So uh, right now he was 1-0 in fights against, I think he fought Tervesta before this and won. And I just fought Foe and I had won. So yeah, this is to win our second match. And obviously I just lost the pure round to Rexy. The Zerka fight was neck and neck, and Rexy just managed to hold the lead by around 50 HP in the final round, meaning he had beat me, and if I didn't win my next fight, I would have not made it to the knockout stages, so I had to win my next fight versus Torvesta, and Rexy was guaranteed through to the quarterfinals. Worthy of the spot that he's taken. And here we are, straight away, Torvesta against Ditta Bitter. First fight against them in the uh, Group 3 stage, 70 defense. Okay, take a look at the shield, shield switch that Ditter Bear has. He's got the... Uh... Uh, the ward, as well as the crystal shield. Love the elven weaponry uh, in RuneScape. I mean, the crystal shield, great against the uh, range, high range defense, and then the ward as well for the uh, magic attack bonus. That's going to help him catch these freezes on the high defense builds, and that did a better. He's starting to build an early lead. Yeah, so he is using, obviously, the uh, the ward, as you mentioned, alongside the Kodai, so his magic is going to be pretty strong, and as well, at the same time, he's going to be pretty defensive. So it's a little bit uh, less offensive than a, than a book that he would have brought earlier, but has that extra defense that, you know, maybe is going to be more important to him. Okay, now Trevesta going to try to bring it back. So the key here for Trevesta is trying to limit the amount of range hits on this Crystal Shield and, and try to hit with other styles, right? You want to try to hit range on those rows while he's got the, the ward out. For the time being, both players diagonal across, so no melee damage. You don't got to worry about just yet. Here comes the first DDS spec. They're better not going to connect on that one as he's down to 35%. Torvesta down to 85, but also lower on HP. And just like we've been mentioning, you know, we've been looking at Torvesta and, you know, how he bruised down and been trying to save his combat pots. Doing a good job at the start of this fight. Yeah, much dif better difference now compared to the first fight that we saw of this uh, Group 3 stage when he was at one sip left with uh, with two and a half brews. Uh, nice little staff bash there from Torvesta. Doesn't hit, unfortunately, though. 
Uh, probably good for his own sake because when they do hit, it's kind of like, oh, it could have been even better. Mm -hmm. He's got frozen by Ditabir as he went in for the DDS spec. Really nice from him there. And uh, yeah, you can clearly see that Ditabir has the advantage here in terms of food. He's only eaten one angler, and that was at the start of the fight to overheal. Yeah, and decided to use the bruise dodge off against Torvesta. Ooh. And there it is. Wow, a really nice spec. 31-23. And that has just demolished the last supplies of Torvesta. Question mark in that. Um, I think that's what you call a big hit. Yeah, absolutely. You won't believe what this guy specced against me in the All-Stars <laughs> PvP Championship. Down to just two Bruceps is Torvesta as Ditter. He's got complete control of the fight, and right now you just need to safe up. And in this moment, he could really just auto-cast Barrage for the rest of the fight, and he should walk out with the victory. Yeah, Torvesta's not having the best of luck of getting these hits in there. He is getting some decent um, barrages, though, but just overall, his hits have... I've seen more zeros than anything in any other fight so far. Yeah, I think uh, the sh shield switch here for Ditter Bitter really paid off. You know, that yep. extra mage offensive bonus that he gets from the ward really helped out catching those freezes. And, you know, Torvesta, unfortunately, fell behind early on, was never able to catch up. So the first fight in the deciding matchup here in group number three goes over to Ditter Bitter. Where now? The second fight of Torvesta against Ditter Bitter, and it's the one defense category. Oh, he's got a ring switch as well as the Sour Sword again. No Ami switch here, just the P-neck if things get a little bit dicey. Starts things off with the range hit. Both catching barrages, so just mage and range to kick things off. Now by doing that, he is sacrificing one additional anglerfish, I believe. Unless he ate that, and that's why he's got a free inventory spot, and I'm just unable to see. Um, but yeah, so you know, it's in the same number of switches. Um, he's just not got the cape switch that you see from Torvesta here. Big barrage for Torvesta to hit there. That's going to give him control of the pace, but it doesn't freeze Ditter Bitter in place. Moving away, catches a freeze of his own, but Torvesta responds. And now you got to worry about all three styles. A big DDS spec coming in from Torvesta. Follows up with another one as well, taking control of the pace, forcing Ditter Bitter to tank up for the time being as his prayers drops. Range hit zero off prayer as now Ditter Bitter heals back up, and now he can attack back. Huge amount of food in favor of Torvesta here. Did a bit of really had to chomp down those anglerfish to keep himself in it. There goes the Sarah Sword. It doesn't get a chance to use it. A nice DDS poke as well, hitting a 14, followed by the DDS spec, all hitting through oh. prayer. Both players now are having opportunities with their prayer has dropped. Sarah Sword Swing unfortunately only hits a 12, but followed up by a very good DDS spec from Ditter Bitter. Now finally Torvesta can take a few moments to breathe because he's just got a freeze on Ditter Bitter and he's doing the step under. Exactly that. Let's see what style he wants to attack with next. Ditter ready to DDS spec back. A 2-0 on prayer. Now it's going to be the Sour Sword. And once again, Torvesta, you want to be using these diagonal squares across from Ditter Bitter. Make it so that if he wants a melee hit while he's frozen in place, he can't do so. As now it's starting to do some damage back. Still fairly even in terms of, of total food available for these players, but this is a big opportunity for Torvesta. Ditter has to tank up, and Torvesta still has specs remaining. Dear Bear, with no spec left on that Sara Sword, is not going to be able to deal a huge amount of damage through a, uh, you know, a sneaky magic damage special. Torvesta's still in full control of this fight at the moment. Um, it has brought it back a little bit for Ditter, though, especially with this freeze. It might be the opportunity he needed. He's going to get a step under, but Torvesta oh. is unfrozen, and two melee hit swings in a row. Three what? now in a row. That Sara Sword is doing absolute work for Ditter Bear. 21 through prayer, bringing the B ring switch just so he can maximize his output with his melee attacks. A DDS spec, there's a chance there to do some. Serious damage, but back in with melee is Ditter. The freeze does not connect here for Torvesta. He's got three anglers, a brew left, one angler. A couple brew sips left for Ditter Bitter. This is a chance here for Torvesta to force that 45 final match. These next few hits are going to decide the rest of this fight, I believe. Ditter Bitter is looking at one Phoenix Necklace and one brew sip left to go through this fight. He, uh, he doesn't have any stat boost in potions. Torvesta has to put on his other recoil. His first one broke. He hasn't put on the second one yet. So he's been losing out on some extra free damage just because he hasn't noticed that his first recoil has broken. Both players now out of food. Ditter, however, having the Phoenix Necklace that might be able to save him in this fight. Oh. Very similar levels of HP and wow, a 28 bolt through prayer. Torvesta falls. It looks like Ditter Bitter has managed to go through to the next round. Tor of the old school RuneScape All-Stars PvP Championship as Mika faces off against Bitter Bitter. Straight away, each player is going to be looking to try and freeze the opponent. Both opting to go for magic as their first hit. Mika manages to get the first freeze against Ditter Bitter and he's opting to stand under instantly. Unfortunately, though, Ditter Bitter does get a really good time freeze against Mika, now freezing them in place side by side one another. So it does look in their spec completely drained. They want to get all of that DPS in. 
And it looks pretty even so far. One uh, or three brew doses left for Ditter Bitter with two, nearly two brews for, uh, for Mika left, both about four or five uh, anglerfish left. Pretty, uh, pretty close fight here. Haven't seen as many step unders as I would have expected, but now we're starting to see it by Mika. It's yeah. funny. It's almost like the oh, oh wow oh, oh, and the KO, KO at the end. Off yeah. the prayer. Well done. Yeah, a bit of best triple because wow. well, I think we've said this now three times. You cannot die if you eat food. It's yeah. a good strategy. I think it feels like no matter what style you have out, you're always doing damage. You're always dealing one. Uh, I feel like the recoils are going to have a big impact here. Ditter, he looks like he's going to be bringing a ring switch again. I'm not sure if he has a Berserker ring equipped now or if it's just two recoils, but he also has the Sour Sword. He brought that out in the last fight, too. Not only that, but you see that Ditter opted to take the Phoenix Necklace this time, which Mika does not have. He brought a uh, additional potion, or what did he do? He, he brought one more switch instead, actually. Yeah, yeah, he's also using the ACB for his plus one. ACB and a cool against the Kodai and Sara Sword for Ditter Bitter. So that's the first time I've seen Ditter use the Sara Sword this tournament so far. Wonder if it's going to pay out for him. If you're just tuning in and you're unfamiliar with where we are at the moment, you can head over to osrsallstars.com forward slash standings to keep up in with all of the recent results. This fight currently is the second fight of the quarterfinals, third match within that group. We'll be moving on to the semifinals as soon as we've got all of these out of the way. Currently, Ditter Bitter seems to be taking the, uh, the lead against Mika here, making Mika eat a lot of food very early on. Interesting point here. You see Ditter's already used some Sarah Brews, and it looks like he did forget to use a Super Combat Pot. So we actually dumped a spec there that, that might have been a little bit less powerful than it should have been if he would have remembered to do so. Yeah, sometimes you take control of the pace early on in the fight and you want to save, you know, all four doses so you won't sit one super combat at the start of the fight because you're not, like, expecting to go in with melee. So maybe it's just that situation. He caught the first freeze, saw an opportunity to go for the DDS spec, went with it, but unfortunately just forgot to pot up. And also one thing I notice is, notice when Mika does damage, there's no recoil effect from Ditter. So he hasn't swapped over to the recoil. He's got a main ring on and he's not really swapping between the two. He actually, I think he just put a second recoil oh, yeah. on, so he might have brought one from the previous round, but he forgot to break yeah. it, so it might have only had maybe four or six damage left on it before it broke uh, based on his last round. That's not going to automatically reset between these. So That's it's extremely just a misstep for him. We see that Mika's out of bruise here. Uh, he does still have one Bastion potion, so he's going to get the uh, the, super, the uh, range pot out of that. And uh, Mika down to three anglerfish, two now. A little bit behind in this fight, but he still does have one spec up. You could still see that out of nowhere. Yeah, he's really going to have to hope for a decent freeze, a nice step under potentially with that spec to follow up, and that hoping that Deer Bear just uses the wrong prayers because at the moment he's now completely out of food. Deer Bear still has two anglers, a full brew left as well, as well as a super combat potion and his Phoenix, ne Phoenix necklace. You need to see Mika get a freeze here and step under. He's out of food, he's out of uh, specs here, so he really does need to try to do something, and that's going to do it for him. Unfortunately for Mika, he falls at the... Second before last hurdle against Deer Vita. Here, but I, I still expect him to have that mage bonus set here. We're going to find out in the next few seconds, just before we get into the game, a very interesting and fun fact for you. RuneScape is actually older than Deer Vita. <laughs> <laughs> so they both go with ACB this time. Book. Bringing the dragon sword in. And yeah, ACB plus one for both these guys. Straight away hitting the fight off. Not managing to catch a freeze on either opponent. One started to go ranged. Now we are looking at one freeze from Mika against Ditter Bitter. And unfortunately for him again, Ditter Bitter just manages to get that freeze again on Mika. So there's no advantage here in terms of step unders. They're both side by side. So they both drop a couple specs. Even though both had Prey Melee up, they do want to get some damage in and hopefully get the advantage in this fight. They're going to keep a couple of those to see if they can catch him off of uh, Prey Melee in the future. But at least both of them wanted to get some of that out of the way. And he catches them in robes there on range spray. That was a great opportunity, just 0-0 zero, zero there. However, all three of those specs from there without that super combat pot active. So maybe the potential to hit and again, some more damage. Yep. Now, interesting to note, the Dragon Sword does have a special attack. So it's going to make it much easier for Ditter Bear to be able to switch into that DDS and get that one tick special that Mika's just unfortunately not going to be able to get unless he goes from ranged into melee using that ACB. But he touched on it during a post-game interview earlier on. Um, yeah, it's really important. Attack weapons that don't have a spec bar mean that you have a one tick delay before that spec bar appears when you do switch to a weapon. So your special attacks are a little bit Whoa, slower. A really wow, nice 50. 50 bolt coming through. And that's those opal dragon bolts coming into, into action. There are a little bit of additional damage from that. Mika's certainly behind now in food. Look at how much anglerfish Ditterbeer has left to play. Just all the hits going in its favor. Catches the freeze as well. Looking to get the range hit off prayer. That one connects as well, 27. Mika's just taking damage from every style Ditter's throwing at him. It looks like he does have the freeze here, so Ditter's not going to be able to step under. That's what he wants here, and that's going to keep him ahead in this fight. Uh, 
neither neither of them still with with special attacks so they have to sit here and, and basically just try to fake him out try to catch him on the wrong prayer or just uh sit back and hope Migra has an opportunity now to actually finally move around. Dirt Bitter still seems to be frozen for the next second or two. And there he is out there straight away with DDS spec on robes. Right prayer doesn't hit enough though. Mika frozen here, so he can't get his out. He does have 30% again, so he has that opportunity if he can get Ditter close enough. But he needs to catch a freeze. If he can do it now, he's going to get unfrozen and he's going to be able to step under Ditter Bitter to hopefully get back ahead in this fight. Sometimes but it's going to be so hard to catch up at this point. Yeah, sometimes it's just nerve wracking to put on robes, especially when your opponent's just freely moving around. But you got to you gotta take the risk, try to catch the freeze. And now Mika completely out of food. And it seems like Ditter Bitter hasn't really eaten much. Notices that Ditter's full health there. And his only opportunity here is really to hit that, that DDS spec. And actually, he takes the risk there anyways. Yeah, and he's Ditter Bitter knows this. And this you one. can just see he's protecting from melee the whole time. It's the only way he's going to be able to get killed out. And he can now just sit here in AFK ranged. Hands off the keyboard. <laughs> And those two important parts of it. Anyway, let's jump right into it. Ditta Bitter versus Rakesy in this best of five semi-final. Winner of here goes to the finals versus Manked Up Mage and the first freeze being caught by Rakesy. Can he get a DD? Uh, if he wants to step under, there it is. Beautiful. Unfortunately, hitting a zero and already trying to fakey his uh, opponent out. Will Ditta go for the freeze right now? He's trying to go for it and catches it. A 29-2. Rakesy praying range there. Unfortunately, and 27 oh. again. The barrage is that Odium Ward coming in clutch and uh, keeping himself the Carol's top on two for that mage defense bonus to ensure that he doesn't get frozen back again either. Uh, Rakesy, food is on. You can eat. Heal back up. Now, one thing that I, I think Mika did better than anybody else when Gomb against Ditter in these 70 defense fights is he made sure that he wasn't longer than like, you know, maybe one square away. He was always in melee distance, which I think it's something that could combat the shield switch that Ditter's bringing out here. And he goes in for that DDS spec, but Rakesy anticipating it, backs off a little bit, catches that extra freeze, gets that DD to start to set the pace himself. He's currently down a couple food, but I mean, it's still early game. He's used up one spec, so has Ditter at the moment, both on 75%. It's anybody's game right now. He's opted for the ACB, so his range is gonna be huge. But oh. that crystal shield, not enough, clearly. A 34 and a 41. The combo's coming in, and Ditter sitting quite low, trying to utilize his bruise as best he can, but another 32. What is this from Rakesy? A 28 wow. on the spec. <laughs> Absolute magician right now. Can he catch a second freeze and keep up this pace? More of a complete archer, more than a magician there. Pure spam with those bolts going in. Absolutely shredding Ditter Bitter to pieces. But I'll tell you something though, Ditter's opting for that Malediction Ward and that Kodai. His mage hits oh. are crazy. Had a was that a 30 through his prey range? Yeah. That was insane, that unexpected spec, which also actually heals him up too. Ditter opting to go to 106 HP right now, utilizing those brews to the best of his ability. Is he going to be able to catch this freeze next? A nice. 42 whip, again, like I said before. That, sh that um, shield is really squishy against melee, especially. And Rakesy, you know, realizing that, going for those ACB specs. Another openable spec, only a 13, unfortunately, for him. Can he catch the next freeze? A 30 freak man. Ditter's mage is in real, and not 26, he has spec coming in too. Rakesy in the Prey Melee on though, and Ditter wasting one of his special attacks too. As soon as you see Ditter equip the Odium, you have to close the distance, right? You know Absolutely. a Barrage is coming. If you could step under him before he gets the click off, that's obviously the best case scenario so that you could get a melee hit in right away. But closing the distance, as soon as you think he's going to throw out magic just like this, that's going to be Rakesy's best chance at KOing him here. Yep. Now, looking at these two players, you can see the uh, potion management from Ditter Bitter is definitely more favorable than it is for uh, Rakesy over here. With just one sip of super combat potion left and no range potions, his range from this point onwards is going to be severely limited in comparison to Ditter Bitter's. And that's his biggest DPS too. Opting for the plus yep. one is the ACB. He needs that range potion realistically, but Ditter just tearing them apart with these barrages right now. I mean, Rakesy's still in it. Another zero, 0 from Ditter. Rakesy got that big tank on, but 35 ball quickly shuts him down. Down again, another fake into the mage. Ditter doing an absolutely fantastic job of staying calm, collected, but I say that too soon. The <laughs> staff bash twice, twice in a here. row. He's pulling that staff him. up his nostrils, and I don't know whether that was just a uh, bad play or a little bit of BM from Ditter Bitter. I'm going to assume it was just a bit of bad play because I would not want to be in a position where I'm throwing this fight at this late stage in the tournament. No, just one angler fish left for Rakesy, and right now he's going to have to eat it. Ditter Bitter certainly in control of the fight for the time being. Should catch this freeze. Another staff bash coming in, but it really doesn't matter at this point. He's so far ahead that he just needs to back on up. Even the, the ACB, ACB spec does good damage, but still not, not enough now. here. He's too, he's so far down. 
No, absolutely. And right now, unfortunately, Rakesy is going to fall in this first best of five. But it is not over yet. Did you get Speckman in for 0-0? Zero, zero. Just going to, you know, just finish him off nice and easily with the barrage, I believe. And those barrages are really coming in clutch there. Great victory Definitely for Definitely a Ditter. lot of damage there with Magic. He's favoring it a lot. I wonder if Rakesy uh, manages to figure that one out and does a similar tactic that Mank did against Boaty and opts to be uh, primarily in tank gear rather than Joan for the offensive. So many bolt specs, one right after another. Yeah, I think I would probably take the ACB as well. Um, either that or the Kodai. I do really love the Ballista that comes out, but I just think the consistent damage from the ACB just triumphs those uh, bigger hits that you get from the uh, the Ballista, especially when it's primarily a magic and ranged based fight, and you go in for those special attacks of the poke every now and again with melee. Now, we spoke about Rakesy obviously having to realize that Ditter uses a lot of magic and prioritizing the Mage Prey, but will Ditter also be using range Prey quite a lot, knowing that Rakesy uses that ACB? Will, will Rakesy change his strategy up, use Mage a little bit more? It looks like he is. Both catching freezes, you know, bit, little, not, nothing much coming on right now. And uh, looks like Race has also gone for some, some only like two-way switches, you know, keeping calm. But a 6.30 spec from Ditter right now. Now here's where it starts to speed up. If he gets that barrage, he does. Another spec coming in, 30, 15, 8, sorry. Steps underneath, get the range out next. And a 20, again, those balls coming in, you right, see right there. So it's a small thing that I'm noticing happen. Once again, Foe actually picked this up the yep. last time we watched Ditter Bitter fight is he brings a ring switch, right? So right now he has a Berserker ring on. He switches it with a recoil, but the recoil he had in his inventory he only had a couple... to break it. Yeah, he had, only had a couple no hits way. left. Forgot, forgetting to break it, so it breaks early that on this huge. fight. If Rakesy stays on top of his, he just gets more free damage than Ditter does. Unfortunately for Rakesy, though, he doesn't for a spec there. He's like a 0-12 on the right prayers too. He has 75% left compared to Ditter's 35%. Now those DDS specs on Pures, it's the game change. You can hit 30, 30 pluses, but Ditter opting for that Sorry sword is interesting strategy. You can hit over 40s pluses max, and especially if you're having one defense. Oh my gosh, could have gone through prayer there, Rakesy. Has to heal up very, very well here. Goes for the spec. I respect it. Just wants to get something damage damage down. Oh, could have been bolted out as well. Very There's large two risk. opportunities. Yeah, coming here from Rakesy. He's, uh, he's definitely playing this one knowing that he has to take those risks to be able to bring himself back in the fight. He's got some spec left available to him. Ditterbit has obviously sank all of his now. He's going to have a spec coming up very soon, but in that time, Rakesy really just wants to be able to focus on getting Ditterbit frozen not getting himself frozen like he has now in the corner. Very soon you're going to see Ditterbit become unfrozen and run straight towards him. I would be very surprised if he didn't decide to smack him with the Sara Sword. Racy is uh, pretty running pretty low on food. We've got three Anglerfish and three Brew Sips compared to a Ditterbitter's five Anglers and two Brew Sips. However, Rakesy does actually have the advantage in terms of his uh, stat boost in potions. He still has three doses left of his Bastion oh, potion. DDS. And that's a really nice hit coming back from that ACB as well. He also has 45% spec left to utilize, maybe 50 if it goes up in time. He's going to go those specs at the perfect time with the ACB having a spec already. can one tick it over. But can he catch his freeze? He's been frozen oh. in place. 35, ball, beautiful. Can he keep this up? ACB the ACB spec. spec. He's just got no food left. He's got to go for something. I think he should have probably waited till he's unfrozen again. Gone for that DDS. That might have cost him the fight. Uh, but Ditter now, down to his last food and a Phoenix necklace. It is neck and neck right here, ladies and gentlemen. There is it he is. Put it on. Yes. Phoenix necklace just gets and broken. It broke. Straight up no to 41 way. HP. Oh, is this going to be what it is? A 25 no hit. Racy needs one more hit against him. Wow. That so, was close. so close. P-Neck winds up being the difference maker once yep. again in these one death fights. It breaks, and you clearly see a sigh of relief from Ditter right there. One more fight is all he needs to secure his ticket to the grand finals. Well, he would face off against Maked Up Mage. I think the big difference there in terms of damage. Four seconds to go until this third fight of the final semi finals Ditter Bitter versus Rakesy on 45 defense builds. And uh, absolutely, yeah, these, these freezes right now, both catching the freeze, and quite interestingly, Ditter is opting for the Dragon Sword. I saw Boat using that as well. I was thinking to myself, why are they using that? Is it because maybe the defense bonuses of the Zerkers uh, are more weak to the stab bonus as opposed to the slash of the D Scimitar or the, uh, the Leaf-Bladed Sword? Uh, but clearly, Ditter doing his homework right now, yep. and uh, Rakesy, both in very similar gear, both opting for that ACB, realizing that the Mage defense, oh my gosh, 28.5, you can actually spec him out there, Ditter, and uh, also the ACB, one of the best things about it is it has that spec bar, so mm -hmm. you're able to one tick to the DDS, and look at these fakes from Ditter. He is feeling really confident right now and just steamrolling at the moment. Can he catch this <laughs> next freeze? Uh, that's one obviously advantage with the uh, Dragon Sword as well as the ACB is the Dragon Sword also has a special attack which allows him to, uh, you know, maybe go for the Dragon Sword poke, then actually switch it out with a potion and go into the DDS and get that one to expect. And Tom's being very, very clever here. He's putting on just the robe top, uh, the, sorry, the, the Dragon Dragon Hide top to try and have the most magic defense possible. But Ditter's freezes are catching him pretty much every single time, which is very unfortunate for him. He's had to do some pretty quick plays here to try and get back into the fight. Ooh. He does have a brew advantage left and he has 75 cents back which can turn the fight around in seconds as we can see here maybe from Ditter wow, a fakey. Nice freeze though in a fakey into range it doesn't actually hit anything in the end 
And let's think back real quick to Didabir's last 45 defense fight against Mika, right? He completely dominated that matchup. So this is certainly a style that he feels very comfortable in. A big hit coming out of Rixie there. 35, bolt hit to follow up. Only a six on top of Prayer there. Yeah. As, once again, just looking at the food between these players, you still have a recall in the inventory of Rixie as well as a, it's an even angler count. And does he, has he actually wielded the, the, the recall yet? Can he wield it? I'm not too sure about that one. Another thing to mention, oh yeah, he's got one, a recall yep. already equipped. Another thing to mention about these fights as well, 44 defense, is probably the fight that a lot of people haven't actually experienced a lot of in terms of us as competitors. I mean, talking to the other guys about it as well. And uh, clearly, again, the, the practice makes perfect and Ditter utilizing his strategy to the best of his ability. And Rakes needs to catch this freeze at the moment. He still has 20% spec, will get another spec before the end of the fight. Unfortunately, he wastes his last one, which didn't hit too much, but he needs to hit now. Gets the DD and he's still in this fight. He's actually at a, a is that a food advantage he has right now, plus the offensive potion too? It does look like Rikersi is in the uh, lead at the moment in terms of food, so whilst this might be a familiar setup for Ditter Bitter, it doesn't seem to be working out in his favour as much as he had hoped. And Tom doing, I'm sorry, Rakesy doing an absolutely fantastic job of getting back into this, and again utilising that Dehyde top, remembering that Ditter likes to use magic, but in this fight, the ACB is paramount. The DPS it does is just uncomparable to any other weapon. Taking his pro for a second there, Ditter has been smited. The DDS spec could have KO'd him as well. He's frozen in place still. Oh my gosh, Ditter is going to have to clutch it back, but he's out of food, and he's out of HP, and he's out of luck. Rakesy takes this one and gets back into this. 2-1 Incredible showcase of skill coming out from Rakesy see that whereas Ditter just needs to win one fight so he's definitely oh. got the upper hand How in clever this is here this? and you can double see highs. straight away double highs to try and combat that magic that Ditter and loves working. to use he's smashed, smashed already for Ditter that's two splashes now Rakesy really his opponent like an absolute wizard and going for it again the range hits off prayer 32 beautiful Ditter saying his robes a bit too long there but putting out a lot of damage and really utilizing his bruise very cleverly here as well. Um, if he's able to get back into the fight, Rakes needs to get a freeze and step underneath, but Ditter does catch it. That was crucial for him. DDS coming in at 7 getting the DD. Another one on parade range, but fortunately a zero, 0 on the on the squishy Carol's leather armor yeah, as well. That's surprising. Yeah, a very good read from Rakes. He put in the protect from melee, but then letting it drop the oh second gosh, time around. And again, it could have happened twice now. He's been specked out by Ditter, Ditter, Ditter unfortunately hitting zeros. That's just the nature of it goes, the way it goes sometimes. Nice. RNG can be the, uh, the a blessing or a sin. Oh, these fakies right now from Rakesy, the whip hits, just absolutely decimating Ditter Bitter. He needs to get back to this fight, catch the next freeze. Although saying that, he has actually up a little bit of food, I believe. And um, his potion management once again. Running wow, a little oh, bit was that a 30 stab? That was, yeah, that, that, if that was a DDS spec, that can be pretty, pretty powerful That was a right DDS there. poke of a 30. <laughs> You'll pretty take that any day of the man. week, right? For sure, that was intended. And again, Rakes utilizing those double carols, but being caught as he turns into his... Oh, the stat from Ditter, almost. But lovely protect from Melee as well, though, coming out from Rakes. He's doing a really good job this time round. Maybe it was just the first few fights he hadn't warmed up because he's definitely changed his pace this time round. Unfortunately for Ditter, though, he's actually getting him off prayer quite a few times, seeing a lot of zeros right now and realizing that he's got to stop using magic and start changing his play style, using range and melee much more due to the low defense bonuses that Rakes he currently has. But Rakes it back into it, going for the ACB again, being very heavy with it and catching mm -hmm. Ditter in robes quite a lot. The 22 whip through the prayer as well. And Rakes wow, is going absolutely tear right there. now. And Rakesy still has 100% spec left. I don't think I've seen him use a single DDS spec. He had a successful poke of the 30, but still with the specs available. Ooh. Now trying to swap there, but Ditter catches the freeze just in the nick of time. Now looking to get under his opponent, back over to his barrage. Rakesy in this situation, he's going to be able to get out of there, but Ditter, he's got a chance to take control of the pace of the fight as he's starting to output some damage of his own. Ditter yeah. now healing up as well. Rakesy taking the opportunity to make sure that he's not a danger of dying, but a 42 to take him down as well. One of the things that's really interesting, the last few freezes that we've seen come from these players, you've seen Rakesy really utilize that melee. Just as we mentioned before, unfortunate for Ditter Bitter. Once again, hitting a 0-0. Zero, zero. That's free when it wasn't now. protect from melee. It definitely has been pure spam. You are right in that front. If you were Ditter Bitter right now, you've got to be pretty mad. Oh, man, I'd be really angry because especially since the fact that Rakesy's opted for that low defense bonus versus melee, but it's got the mage defense. Not only is he splashing every single freeze, but he's also hitting 0, zero DS's. He's got and a this pretty, next uh, freeze is going to be so crucial. And Rakesy does manage to catch it, but opting not to step underneath, although he's going to go for it now, potentially. And he's oh. up quite a bit of food. The 12 spec could have been a bit higher for him. And currently, Ditter uh. on the ropes. Again, is he is he opting for that ACB spec well, every time? I'm not too sure. spec. Perhaps I'm not that sure. one wasn't a mistake. I mean, if that ends up making him win the fight, look at Ditter Bitter right now. One anglerfish left, whereas Rakesy has four anglerfish and two brew doses. If Ditter Bitter doesn't catch a freeze here, I think it's going to be bitter, bitter, bitter.
I mean, he's not catching freeze now. Race does not have his Carol's level top on, and therefore, Dear is able to catch the freeze, but he's out of food. And Rexy has quite a bit left. I think he's able to clutch this one back again. Yeah, at we this point, you just want to eat all the way up to full HP. Don't take any risks. There's no way that you can get comboed out, and he's doing exactly that. Yeah. That's a vibe kill when you're in a situation like that. You're like, okay, you know, the HPs are pretty close. <laughs> if I catch the freeze, then the next, take you, the next attack you see, Wow, he's got a full bar of HP. I was going to say, we've seen comics in this tournament oh. before. They've happened. And right now, Ditter trying as best he can to stay in the fight. ACB's but the ACB ACB take through. it down. Rexy, Very read clever. him to death. Man. Finals of who will fight Manx in the final. Here we go. Ditter opting for the DDS off the bat, but actually faking it, going for the, the mage off, off, the, off the start and catching that freeze and going for the step under straight away, Ben. Yeah, Rexy getting himself trapped in the corner. And unfortunately, as a competitor, this is where you feel the pressure the most. Ditter, as he was up 2-0 well in the series, rexy has been able to battle back, forcing the third match up here. We've already highlighted the cash that's available for the winner here. And Ditter's done a great job of just dictating the pace early on, already dumping three of his specs. And both utilizing the two-way switches again right now. The Kodai for Ditter with the plus one. He said before, the Rexy and the ACB going for the DS spec. Oh, the fakey again. Ditter faking me so, so well. He realizes this is a clutch moment for him. He's got to be able to output as much damage and minimize as much damage and faking his opponent out as, as much as possible. And Rexy right now needs to catch this freeze. He needs to get up on, on top of them and needs to try, you know, bring back a few more fights. He's definitely been taking a lot of damage in the last 30 seconds or so really is up against a huge wall at the moment and that wall is ditter bitter sitting at the top dabbing away the damage is going through both sitting wow. at 30 hp oh all the way back down now to 20 to each one that hits just keep flying left right left right which one of them is going to fall first i'll tell you what ditter is actually up quite a bit of food right now but he has utilized all his specs all it takes for racing that one spec on the right prayer but ditter bitter anticipating it keeping primarily up switching between the two to try and you know get racing into a, <laughs> a bad friend of mine what's he going to do he's, he's taking his time potting up you know trying to calm himself down and uh, make the most of whatever oh. potentially has. Fortunately, it was a 25 hit even through Protect from Melee. Really nice from him, and he managed to then follow up that with a pretty decent bolt back from Ditter Beer uh, to pull himself back through into this fight. We're now looking at one Anglerfish and two Brudo Sips from Rexy compared to four Anglers. And is that seven Brew Sips for Ditter Bitter? <laughs> Wait, Ditter's just smashing him with the Sara Sword right now constantly. And the, and the thing is about Pure is when you're fighting on a Pure, you usually tend to pray range the majority because that's just the most DPS that it does. But that Sara Sword coming in clutch right now with a B ring as well and actually changing up a little bit. Oh, the DDS spec! Oh. Almost got well, oh, the recoil, the recoil. Okay, Walking around with Finishing it off. <laughs> Can't believe it. Well, when you have not much food or none at all, there's not really much that you can do. And it just showed there that even though Rexy had put together an amazing fight, pulling in two fights in a row, was the last one to take it, did a bit ultimately showing that he was the better uh, opponent of that fight. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and, you know, round of applause for Rexy as well. So that was probably my most intense fight versus Rixi, who came from a backup going all the way to fourth place. He lost uh, the loser's bracket versus Bodhi, but he still got fourth place. I had the 2-0 lead. He came back 2-2, and I managed to win 3-2 versus him. Very, very intense, meaning I was in the final versus Manked Up Mage, the grand final of the PvP All-Stars. So I made it into the grand finale versus Manked, and he had, was 11-0 before going into this final. He had not lost a single round. I had lost four rounds, all to Rexy in the group stages and in the semifinal. Now, I'd like to say this is some grand finale. I won four, three, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, and I was the winner. But as you guys all watched live, that was not the case. Manked Up Mage in this tournament was undefeated. He was unstoppable. He was destroying every single fight he had, and that was just the case against for me. I had a little bit of a close fight in the first one and in the second one, but for the third and fourth fights, he just steamrolled me, and I, I was happy to take second place behind him. He was amazing. He was great. Congratulations to him. Huge respect. I took second place, $7,500. Forever the runner-up. I'll take it, to be honest. Uh, there was really nothing I could do. He was too good for me. Anyway, that's how my All-Stars went. I'm sorry if I let you guys down. I talked a lot about winning, but honestly, there was nothing I could do for that. He was just too good. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. I hope you guys did enjoy watching the stream. If you did, leave a like and subscribe if you are new. I will be trying to upload more PK content as soon as possible. So thank you guys for all supporting me and watching the stream, and I'll see you guys later.